Nanotechnology is uh, one of the most important parts of trying to figure out how best to, to cure different diseases um, and to really uh, enhance our community. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Well, nanotechnology is a field that converges expertise from uh, all the fields, starting from chemistry, where now we know how to make larger molecules, and physics and engineering, where the tools to measure, to observe, and to investigate uh, on our developed on the nano scale. So now there are groups from the different disciplines uh, like physics, uh, chemistry, and uh, biology and medicine that are converging. For example, you could think about examples like taking stents. If someone is having um, an operation at age 65 and you, you get a stent there, it's okay. It's not so nice, but it's okay. But then if you have to replace that stent after 10 years, then it's not so nice to even pass that operation. And if you could use none layers that protect that stand and biofeedback for releasing a controlled release of drugs from that stand then you could extend the lifespan of those uh, stands and then the next operation may be prevented or you know delayed right. beyond the life expectation and it's like you know when, when you hear these like these t like these terms of like extending stems it's like you feel like I feel like I'm going back to the future or so, or something like that which is it's just like it, it's it's really the future of where technology is going in terms of um, healthcare and and trying to figure out what's the next best thing to enhance our lives. Well, one of the things that they are unique for nanotechnology is that it combines both a short um, a time difference between the discovery and the, the application on one hand, and on the other hand, our basic research is training new ideas that will form the future of uh, research in the longer term of 10, 15, 20, 20, 30 years. If you think about the um, uh, theory of relativity that was invented in 1912 and it was totally unapplicable, but then the nuclear uh, power and later on if you have an iPhone, or your iPhone is using a GPS and no GPS can work without that uh, um, uh, theory. Nowadays we develop new particles uh, that can act as, uh, as um, uh, targets that f to, to target uh, drugs into specific tumors. For example, um, the first nano-based uh, drug for cancer approved by FDA was developed at the Hebrew University and led to a medicine called Doxil, which is uh, one of the leading um, incomes, was one of the leading incomes of the Hebrew University. The idea there is that you encapsulate the drug in a small uh, particle, which is large enough to go only into the tumor cells, but not into other cells. So then the drug is not distributed all over your body, but targeted to those cells. That's one example. And then now we're developing new generations of those activities. Another direction could be monitoring the a critical stage in the life cycle of uh, HIV. You know, in the Western world it is kind of chronic disease, but in Africa about a third of the population has this uh, disease. And if you could uh, understand and develop inhibitors for that process, that would be fantastic. And uh, that's in the medical directions. Um, so one of the focal areas is um, tissue engineering and uh, drug delivery. But we work also in different directions, like solar energy. Uh, solar energy means that you have a cell in which you take charges and you separate them, so that you can create current. And the idea is that you you need a transparent conducting cover. So, you know, the, the, the amount of sun that falls on Earth within one hour is enough for the consumption of the whole world for a whole year. So in those cells, you can think about a Professor Shlomo Magdasi from our university developed kind of a coverage in which, in which you can print circles made of nanoparticles on top of a glass, a glass a sheet. And uh, these uh, circles are overlapping like Olympic rings. And then most of the area is transparent, but still it is conductive. <laughs> and um, there are other roads, like uh, one of the differences between the macroscopic world and the nano world is that in the macroscopic world you can take 
an object, you scratch it, you deform it, you change it. Its properties are not very much changed. If you take a football, one of the old type where, you know, the black and white ones, and you put an atom in each corner, and you shrink it just one billion times, you get a molecule which is called fullerene or buckyball. And that's a 60 atoms football, which is the size of less than one nanometer. One nanometer is one billionth of a meter. And if you take just one atom from that molecule and replace it with another atom, all the properties are different. You can make particles where you know exactly the position of each atom. You can really control the properties. For example, um, uh, another application which is uh, in the direction of lighting, we are using those Edison lamps, and in a few years they are they will not be allowed anymore because of the energy that they consume. Most of the energy is going into heat. Now nowadays there are the new um, lamps, but their color is not so pleasant. And uh, if you have a filter in which you have particles, and when you take particles, there there which size is between two nanometers and six nanometers, they will absorb the sunlight, the UV light, and will emit in a different color depending on their size. So you can think about shifting that light into the more reddish, warm, nice color. If you look at two photos of a two uh, um, paintings of Renoir in this light or in the new light, one of them will look not so nice. So by shifting the light, you can get better light. It can be used also for other applications in uh, agriculture. Um, you, it happens to be that you need light in the UV and in the IR, in the red and in the blue extremes. So if you take the UV light, you can shift it to those directions. So you can really control the spectral uh, composition of the light. So there's a company called Q-Light, which is a spin-off from the lab of Professor Uri Banin. And there are more and more applications. Right, right. Well, thank you so much for all your information. Thank you very much. We appreciate it.